Michelle, Yuri, and Pedro have recently moved to a tropical country and love the fruit juices. Fruit juices are acidic outside the body and stay acidic when digested. Fruit juices can therefore increase the acidity in the stomach and cause heartburn. The friends are interested in finding out which fruit juice is most acidic and would lower the pH in the stomach the most. So generally, all criteria in BC questions in sciences, which is chemistry, physics, and biology, all start with a sort of situation in which this case is they want to uh, experiment between fruit juices and pH level in order to, because it connects to the issue of heartburn that can be caused by the acidity in the stomach. So they give a real life situation and they create an experiment based off of it. So they use the following method in their practical using each of the following fruits. So they use apple, pear, grape, cranberry, and tomato. They put 100 grams of cut up fruit and 100 cm cube of water into the mixer, mixed it for one minute, filter the mixture with a filter funnel, poured 100 cm cube of each juice into, the two, into a 250 cm cube beaker. And then finally, they use a pH probe to measure the pH of each juice by dipping the probe into each juice. And then they repeated it for all of the other foods. And they made sure that the pH probe is washed after each reading so that the pH of the previous food does not affect the reading of the next food. So starting off with question one, state the variables in this experiment. So usually when they say variables, they mean three types of variables. They mean the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the control variable. The independent variable is what you change in the experiment, in which this case is they change the type of fruit because either apple, grapes, cranberry, tomato, and everything else. Dependent variable is what you measure from the independent variable. So the what changed is the type of fruit. So what we measured was the pH level in this experiment. And the control variable is other things that could possibly affect the dependent variable, things besides the independent variable. As in this experiment, we only want to compare the independent and dependent variable. So there shouldn't be any other variables that impact the experiment. Hence, they're asking us to state the variables in the experiment. Take note that it just says state. There's no need to explain anything. They just want to know what these variables are. So the independent variable is the type of fruit. The dependent variable is the pH level of the fruit juice. And the constant variables, usually whenever, whenever you list constant variables, you should list at least two. Because the marking scheme is usually in a way where they say you, at least two constant variables are mentioned. So what could impact the fruit juice is possibly there are many things. You could say that the amount of each fruit you use maybe could affect the pH level depending on the quantity of the fruit. So we could say mass of cut up fruit. We could also say that the volume of water maybe once that Maybe fruit juices that are more diluted have a lower pH level. Okay, the volume of water. And we could also say the time taken for the mixture when you mix the fruits with the water. And if it's not mixed properly, it may affect pH level as well. The constant variables are endless. So as long as you write anything that somewhat makes sense, you should be getting the four marks, which is one independent variable, one dependent variable, and two constant variables. Next question, state the research question that this experiment could, would investigate. Whenever there's a question where they say, and they want to know the research question, usually a good, it should be a question, right? So usually a good starting place for a research question is what is the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Because that's what we want to find out. We want to find out how the independent variable uh, impacts the dependent variable. 
So in this case, the independent variable is the type of fruit and their acidity. Okay, so we want the type of fruit is technically the independent variable, and the dependent variable is the pH levels, which is what we are using the pH levels to measure the acidity. So we could just say to so between the type of fruit and acidity, which we measure through pH levels. So technically what we want to know is the, the acidity, but the way we're measuring it is through pH levels. And that's where we're getting one mark. And then question three, the results from the experiment are shown in the table below. Using data in the table, identify the fruit juice and pH that could cause the most severe heartburn. Justify your answer using scientific reasoning. So let's answer one question at a time. They want to know the fruit juice and pH that could cause the most severe heartburn. One thing to take note of for questions like this is to always look at the situation that they give you because normally the situation gives you some sort of information. So we can see here it says, fruit juices are acidic outside the body and stay acidic when digested. Fruit juices can therefore increase the acidity in the stomach and cause heartburn. So basically the higher the acidity of the fruit juice, the higher the more severe the heartburn. We can make that logical reasoning because they're saying the acidity is what causes the heartburn. So it should be more severe if a more acidic fruit gets into the body. And a lower pH level indicates higher acidity. So the type of fruit juice that in this situation shows the lowest pH level would be cranberry juice. So the fruit juice that could cause the most severe heartburn is cranberry juice. This is because it has the lowest pH level of 2.4, indicating that it is the most acidic type of fruit juice, as lower pH levels indicate higher acidity. The higher a higher acidity in the stomach, the higher the acidity in the fruit juice, the higher the acidity in the stomach, causing the most severe heartburn. And this is an answer that would allow you to score all the three marks over here. So first you have to answer the first question. They tell you to identify the fruit juice and the pH that could cause the most severe heartburn. So we're identifying the fruit juice, just cranberry juice and the pH level of 2.4 because they want you to use the data from the table. And I say use the data from the table, you have at least is some sort of data because there's probably marks for that. And then the rest is just explanation that it's the most acidic time and higher the acidity in the fruit juice, higher the acidity in the salt. So that's how you get three marks for your first uh, question because they want you to justify using scientific reasoning. A lot of the times you're not expected to know the scientific reasoning. The question gives it to you. You just have to identify it and sort of make those connections. The next question, present the data in a graph. You need to give your graph an appropriate title and label the axis. So first let's determine what type of graph this is. We can see that the variables are the pH level and the type of fruit juice. Usually when the, the independent variable is a sort of discrete data, it's not really it's not continuous, the graph would be a bar graph, not a line graph. The two options are 
bar and line. But in this situation, because we're dealing with discrete data, we'll be choosing a bar graph. And in case you're not aware, a graph usually works in a way where the independent variable is at the x-axis and the dependent variable is at the y-axis. So the title of the graph would be the dependent variable versus the independent variable. That's usually what the graph is like. And then we plot whatever values there are. So we can take this apple, pear, and then we just plot appropriate values to match the graph. Next question, suggest an extension for this experiment. An extension is just what else could you possibly extend on this experiment? I think it should still relate to the main goal of this experiment to determine how different food juices at different pH levels and how it can affect the acidity in the stomach. It should still somewhat relate to that, but it should be an experiment that gives a bit more information. One possible extension could be that since different fruits, even the same fruits, have different stages of ripeness, possibly there could be different pH levels for those different le levels of ripeness. So maybe determining, maybe experimenting on the same food, but the different levels of ripeness could help uh, find out more data on how ripeness affects acidity So, and how the, that acidity will affect the acidity in the stomach. That's a sort of extension that can be done for this specific experiment. So we can write it like this. The fruits have different stages of ripeness can be used and measured for their pH level. Acidity of a fruit differs based on how ripe it is. You barely, need, you should explain slightly if your point is not clear, but since this is a one more question, there's really limited need for explanation. The data in the table in part C was from one trial for each food. Outline the benefits of carrying out more than one trial for each experiment. Outline is more of a higher command term, more, or less, more so than state. So usually when they mention outline, you should include two points with just minimum detail. Minimum details enough because you get one mark for each of the points that you make. So the question says that, so the question asks for the benefits of carrying more than one trial. Usually in experiments, at least three trials are conducted. And this for the purpose of getting an average. So that's one point. It allows an average to be. Obtain. That's technically one point. And there's also another thing in which carrying more trials would allow any random errors or anomalies to be identified, while also minimizing the impact of any random errors. This allows sort of more reliable and accurate values to be obtained. So you can say that it allows any anomalies to be identified. It allows There's no need to include all of these points, but for this type of question, which commonly appears a lot in criteria BC questions, ones that deal with the number of trials, because we normally expect it to have three trials on an average. So if it doesn't have one trial, if it only has one trial, it's normally a limitation of the experiment. 
So these are sort of answers that you could use. And moving on to the last question, instead of using a pH probe, indicators can be used to identify the pH of solutions. Cherry juice can be used as an indicator. The color changes for different pHs are shown in the scale below. So when the pH level is around one to four, it'll be red, four to six orange, six to nine purple, nine to 12 green. Cherry juice was added to four beakers containing different clear colorless liquids. Use information from the scale to select the color that will be seen in each beaker. Uh, don't mind this, it's a repetition, the question. Okay, the question is quite straightforward. They just want you to identify what color would be seen based on the pH level. So for pH 3.2, you see 3.2 is in the red zone, so red would be the color you see. pH 9.5, 9.5 is in the green zone. pH 7.0. is in the purple zone. And finally, pH 3.6 is also within the red zone. Oh, there's still one more question. Statewide cherry juice cannot be used to determine the exact pH of fruit juices. This is probably a pretty open question, but one answer that you could possibly use, as I mentioned before in the previous question about the extension of the experiment, ripeness of the fruit could also affect the pH level. So this sort of like indication of the color changes for different pHs may not apply for all the, all the cherry juices that you use because it's probably made with different cherries of different ripeness. So this scale may change a bit. Uh, who knows, this could move down a bit here. So the range for orange could be wider. Changes like that could happen if cherries of different ripenesses are used. So that's possibly one reason why cherry juice is not a good idea to determine the exact pH of fruit juices. It can give you an estimate, but it won't give you the exact value. So cherry juice cannot be used as its acidity would differ based on its brightness. Hence the range of colors for the pH levels may not be the same for a different batch of cherry juice that was produced using different cherries of different brightness. Yeah, and those are all the questions relating to this uh, set of questions.